Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video from Fanboys Forever. Today I'm coming to you with the long-awaited review of the brand new Masters of the Universe PowerCon 2021 Leo Faker from Masters of the Universe Origins. And here's the other cool part about this. Not only is it Leo Faker, but you also get Duplicat, which is a new concept about what his steed might look like. So let's go ahead and talk just for a moment about what Leo Faker even is. Leo Faker is an homage to a foreign market toy that was produced by the company Leo Toys in the late 80s. This version of Faker was a little bit different than the standard version. The paint around the eyes was quite different, and the selection of armor looked a little more complete compared to the normal Faker. And this has been a variant that fans have really enjoyed for a lot of years. So it was really cool to see Mattel officially acknowledge this variation and do this really neat looking Masters of the Universe Origins figure. We all know that it was really difficult to get a hold of the PowerCon 2021 figures, and there was an absolute saga in them making it across the ocean to us. And here we are months later, uh, finally getting these things. I got mine from Big Bad Toy Store, and hopefully, who knows, maybe a couple more will pop up over time, but I do think they have boosted the price even more since then, so it's going to be kind of hard to get a hold of. Let's go ahead and look at this shipper box. That's something that Mattel has done an absolute standout job on lately are these incredible exclusive shipper boxes. You have this awesome lined, like, hand-drawn artwork, and it is just absolutely incredible. Surely they're setting a new standard for a shipper box. I have a really hard time throwing any of these away. At the top, you can see the power con burst. On the back, you get even more awesome artwork. Last but not least, have a little bit of copyright info. I also like the really nice kind of credits that they have there for this figure. Well, that's enough looking at the shipper box. Let's look at the actual package product inside. And here we have the actual set itself. And let me tell you, it is a thing of absolute beauty once you get it out of the box. First of all, we can see that there's a title for the set, Maniacal Mimics, Dangerous Doppelgangers of He-Man and Battle Cat. We have some really cool looking characters back here over Snake Mountain. And uh, let's hope we're actually getting a Snake Mountain in Origins, right? Because I can't afford the Classics one <laughs> that they did at Super 7. Up here, we have the incredible artwork. Of course, it's new for 21, almost new for 22 because of the shipping delays. Down here, we do have the Faker title, Evil Robot of Skeletor, and Duplicat, the Evil Cybernetic Tiger. Man, what a title. Loving how vivid all of the colors are on this set. I think it really turned out spectacularly. And the packaging artwork just does so much to even aid it further. On the side, you can see we have a small painting of Battle Armor Skeletor. On the other side, we have some interesting things going on. And on the back, we get an incredible actual finished piece from the shipper box artwork that we saw on one side. And this is as nice as it gets. I absolutely love this. And at the bottom, copyright info. Uh, in short, I'm not throwing this box away. It's too gorgeous. Before we actually look at the figure itself, it is worth noting that I got one little extra. PowerCon people said that they would be packing this with big bad orders as well. And sure enough, here they are. It's the cool little PowerCon art cards. First art card we have is Tila here, looking very nice. Evil Lynn and She-Ra. On the back, just like trading cards of old, you can connect the cards together to finish out the scene. So it's gorgeous. I love that I got these. It was just a fun little extra addition. All right, let's open them up. And here we have in all of its glory, this gorgeous new Leo Faker and Duplicat set. So let's begin by having a look at Faker himself. So as we discussed at the beginning of the video, this figure is definitely meant to be kind of an obscure vintage homage, particularly to that old figure that was produced as an overseas exclusive by Leo Toys thus the name Leo Faker. Let's start with the main differences. So one of the things you'll notice straight away is the funny kind of paint application that we have right around the eyes. And you can see that he ends up having kind of yellow eyebrows or almost green eyebrows because it's yellow paint over black. So it ends up with kind of a green looking effect with completely red eyes. Of course, this is in stark contrast to the actual uh, version of Faker that we're all familiar with. And the hair is a little bit more of a burnt orange. And moving on to the chest armor, it is done in more of a pearlescent orange. And other than that, it's just Skeletor's armor that we all know and love. You can see it around the back. You can see that the chest decal, if I unclip it, 
you can see the chest decal is exactly as it was before. So there's nothing really new about that, which is a little disappointing because I think it might have been fun to have done something a little different. Moving on down, we come to our next really big visual difference, and that's that he actually has Skeletor's loincloth. Of course, this is done in that same kind of orange pearlescent that we saw the chest gear done in, but the original Faker, of course, doesn't have that. So it's really interesting to see. Under, of course, you just see the regular Skeletor kind of furry underwear, and then the regular uh, boots down here done in purple. So overall, I think it really does a good job of capturing that original figure's look. And it does include not only the power sword, but it includes an orange pearlescent version of Skeletor's Havoc Staff. Really loving all the little details on this. And for some reason, I'm able to pick up those details quite a bit more with this new kind of pearlescent orange plastic that it's in here, probably because it's a lighter color. Of course, the articulation on Leo Faker is exactly what you would expect it to be. With the head going up and down, it can go around, the torso spinning. Of course, the arms can go up and down, hinges out. Here at the elbows can turn. We do have a single joint. We have hinges at both wrists. The hands can turn. We do have ball joints at the hips with plenty of motion up, back, forward, every which way. Over here, we do have a swivel at the knee. We can bend it with a single joint. And there is a swivel at the boot. And there is a great hinge and rocker at the ankles so that you can get even the widest stances. And he really doesn't have too much trouble holding them. Overall, he's just as articulated as you would hope, and I've not had any trouble with any kind of joint tolerances or anything like that. And just so you can see a quick comparison between this and the regular standard release from one of the more recent waves of Origins, you can see that they're quite a bit different once you have them side by side like this. You can see just how much more matte this orange plastic is here and how much more, more pearlescent that it is over here. It's also pretty obvious to see the differences in hair color with this being much more of a Ronald McDonald tone and this being a little more natural looking actually. Of course, the biggest difference comes in the heads. You can see the new one has the much more outrageous color scheme and the old one has just a basic He-Man head as if he were a gar. Overall, it is really funny for me to see them side by side because this looks woefully incomplete now comparing it to the Leo Faker as if this was him still sort of halfway cloaked as He-Man and this is him fully unveiled in his actual true robotic evil form. Next up, we'll be looking at Duplicat. Of course, this is really the thing that appealed to me even more than Leo Faker about the set. As soon as they shown this thing, I was enamored to say the least. For years, people have been customizing and doing different things to kind of show different ideas and notions about what maybe a Faker steed might look like. What would the evil imposter version of Battle Cat be? Well, I actually think Mattel has done a tremendous job here of creating not only a color scheme that is very complementary to Faker with the kind of blue and then the yellow striping, but they also have a really nice pearlescent orange saddle. And they've also included these really, really gnarly kind of techno gloves that is almost meant to look like, hey, there's a little bit of the robot peering through almost like a Terminator battle damage type of situation. And then the actual head sculpt is brand new as well with robot parts being revealed right around the face and even our little robo armor crest at the top. When you open up the mouth, it's all done in silver and there's so much cool detail, of course, with the tongue and everything, but it's the framing around the face that really sells it with the red eyes. This thing is really aggressive looking and I think it does a wonderful job of conveying like real threat through kind of a rather silly color scheme. So I think it works tremendously. Uh, the only thing I can say negative about mine is there's a little bit of a silver paint that's splotched over here. Of course, I can easily remove that because this is blue plastic. So I can easily take a little acetone and get that off. As it stands though, uh, we'll say that that's more of his cybernetic skin coming through the fur. Of course, articulation is exactly what you would expect on this guy. And it's the same as we've seen in other releases. However, the head does seem a little easier to move here. So that's definitely a plus, goes all the way up, all the way down. The jaw opens up, no problem. Of course, all of the limbs can go around like that. You do get a single joint right here and you can turn the paw, of course. Over here, you get a single joint and you can turn it as well. The tail has a hinge, it can go up and down and go all the way around. Of course, I would still have loved to have seen them work in some kind of ankle pivot right here, right at the base of the paws. That would have been great. It's also worth noting that you can actually remove 
these robo coverings and just get regular blue paws. So if you want something a little more classic looking, you can do it. But I'll be honest with you, that's probably the last time these are ever coming off. I really love the way that these look on here and they do a great job of just completing that cybernetic aesthetic here. I think Mattel did a tremendous job. And if there's one reason you should own the set, not only is Leo Faker a great homage figure, but this is a spectacular new creation. And I certainly hope that there's a way that they'll be releasing this in the main line or as another kind of exclusive down the line that might be a little easier for people to get. Everyone deserves to own this guy because it's fantastic. So even though there's no such thing as a vintage duplicate to compare him to, we can of course compare him to regular old Battle Cat. I like using the Target exclusive version where he's kind of got some battle damage. I just like the colors on it more than the standard edition. And it really makes for an absolutely fantastic kind of battle pose to have them both facing off against each other like this. It's just so gratifying to see some rifts on these classic figures that feel true to the vintage source with He-Man's slightly modified head sculpt and battle damage, along with this brand new kind of vintage homage to those foreign figures. It just feels right at home with everything that Mattel has done for Masters of Universe Origins, and I couldn't be happier with the result. Needless to say, I'll have a hard time not just using this faker as my main faker in the Origins display now, with the old faker taking kind of a backseat to this new one. It just looks more interesting and has so much more going on visually that it would be hard for me, if I were someone at Mattel, to not just go with this as Faker's standard look when it comes to artwork and the way he's depicted in the line. Speaking of that though, in order to do it without infuriating fans, they're going to need to find a way to get this guy out to more people in a much more readily available state. It's a shame that the PowerCon exclusives were so incredible, yet so out of reach for so many folks. It doesn't really seem fair, but then again, not a lot in collecting is these days. And with all the shipping delays, I think it would be the least Mattel could do to make sure that everybody has a chance to own this figure. Naturally, of course, they would still want to retain its exclusivity to the people uh, who paid, you know, a pretty good price for this guy. And of course, retain its collectability as well. So I know that they'll need to make a few small changes. And I think that would be a okay. And I don't think anybody would really mind. We all know that that's the kind of thing that just has to happen in the business. So would I recommend him? Yes. Would I recommend paying an insane price that would cause you and your family to have to eat, I don't know, canned beans throughout the holidays? Maybe not. <laughs> he is wonderful, but I would have a little bit of patience as maybe, just maybe, just like the Lords of Power set, Mattel will find ways to get these sculpts out to everybody. Well, friends, I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this review found it maybe a little helpful or at least entertaining as you've watched. Of course, I would love to know your opinions about this guy in the comments down below. I read every single comment and usually get around to responding to a great deal of them actually. So that's one of the best things about this community is we can all just have a discussion together. So I'd love to hear more down below. I apologize for the lack of master's content lately. It seems like life has gotten awfully busy for me with my day job, so hopefully I can dedicate a little bit more time to it moving forward. I still have those other PowerCon exclusives to review, so I can't wait to get those up just as soon as possible. Also, we have the brand new figures from the latest waves as well, like Webster here, and we're definitely gonna get around to those, and of course update our top Masters in the Universe Origins list. And then again, I'm not even hardly scratched the surface when it comes to Masterverse and the kids He-Man and the Masters of the Universe line based on the Netflix CGI show. And of course, you'll be hearing my opinions very soon on the second half of Masters of the Universe Revelation. So there's going to be a smorgasbord of Masters of the Universe content coming your way. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. As always, God bless you and yours. Take care, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out.